Mob movies and TV shows, mainstay of American entertainment. But being in the real life mob is, it's different. It's very ugly. And it's a reality. In a new book, Sean Scott Hicks will join us in a moment. Details his experiences as a member of Boston's notorious Winter Hill Gang, maybe best known for being Walt Whitey Bulger's gang. He was exposed to the mob as a child when his mother started dating a member of the gang while also she was having an affair with the gang's leader. It didn't take long before Hicks dropped out of school, began a life of crime that continued for decades. He says, quote, I went from boy to monster, collecting loan repayments, stealing cars, and describing what was a downward spiral of violence, including pistol whipping and torturing so-called enemies of the mob and spent years of his life in and out of prisons for conspiracy, racketeering, counterfeiting, money laundering, bank robbery, kidnapping, aggravated assault, even attempted murder. During this time, Wicks, Hicks also struggled with addiction, obtaining heroin and coke throughout his time in prison, an addiction that got so serious that he apparently drank himself into a three-day coma after a prison release in 2016. But for a story that includes so much chaos, his journey is also one of hope. Today, Hicks' life is vastly different. He was released from prison for the ninth, and he says, final time in 2020. He's now a writer, actor, and producer, and is sober. Joining us now, former Irish mobster and author of The Devil to Pay, A Mobster's Road to Perdition, Sean Scott Hicks, thanks very much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. So you talk about this starting as you're a child. Tell us about that. Yes. Um, so my mother was very promiscuous and uh, we moved around quite a bit and um, she had very strange bedfellows and it was just um, the exposure and uh, as a young man I was um, drawn in by what I was witnessing and it was uh, like a moth to flame, basically. I want to read a quote from the book about your relationship with Whitey Bulger. You said Whitey had begun keeping a fond, watchful eye on me and my work. He was an admirer of sorts. He liked that I had not only a proclivity for violence, but a talent for it. Whitey saw that I was different, that I could be molded into an asset for his agenda, a soldier, the perfect weapon. What do you mean you had a talent for it? Um, I developed an internal switch that I could turn off and on. Um, and I paid that price uh, later on in life um, using alcohol to kind of numb the pain because I, I really didn't get any enjoyment out of waking up in the morning and knowing I had to go hurt somebody. There was nothing um, that I saw joyful in that. It was just a necessity, part of the job description, simple as that. Did it upset you when you, ha when you did that? Were you, was there any guilt? I, I did, um, yes, a ton of guilt. Um, I still carry baggage to this day. Um, that's probably 95% of the reason that I became a raging alcoholic. Just, you know, I had to drink myself into a stupor every night just to fall asleep. Uh, I don't know how many bathroom mirrors I would uh, punch out um, just to be able to live inside my own skin. I hated the person looking back at me. And are you sure you're done? Um, is it, are you feel confident that you're you're done with that life? 100%. Um, I met a wonderful, wonderful woman, Charlene, my wife. We have blended families. I've reunited with um, my daughter, Asia. Matter of fact, uh, my granddaughter's in the uh, house right now, my three-year-old granddaughter. Uh, uh, I have a wonderful stepdaughter, uh, first year of college. And I don't owe the streets anything anymore. I paid my, you know, I paid my dues. Um, I did my time in prison. I didn't do like a lot of other guys from Boston. I won't mention their names, but um, become professional witnesses. I knew what I was getting into. And uh, I paid the price, you know. As far as Winter Hill goes, it's, it stretches back way before my time, um, before I was born. Um, so there was situations with uh, older guys, which I, I probably shouldn't have uh, done it on social media, but uh, I termed, uh, this group as the geriatric gangsters that are, you know, 20 and 30 years older than me. They're like, ah, oh, we never did anything. I said, well, you know, read the book. You know, I, there was a lot of guys I never had interaction with. So my involvement with Jim, did I engage in criminal activities with Jim Bulger? At times, yes. 
if anybody else uh, in his inner circle or uh, guys that he was with on certain days or whatever uh, were privy to that. It's none of my business. I didn't want anybody knowing my business. I was more nomadic and more alone. Uh, that's why I came up, uh, well, I was uh, given the name Ghost because everybody was, you know, like you're an enigma. I just it wasn't flashy to me. I didn't, you know, there was, it's not like um, a social club where everybody's standing around, you know, as you see in Hollywood as it's portrayed. Um, same thing with a symbolic initiation ritual of pricking a finger and burning a saint card. It doesn't happen like that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's guys uh, that are, uh, or were a part of Winter Hill. I never, never met, never met me. You, you worried about any retaliation for writing the book? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Everyone's either dead or, or in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sean Scott Hicks, thank you very much. He's the author of The Devil to Pay, A Mobster's Road to Perdition. Thanks very much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Good luck with this chapter. Thank you for life. having me. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.